All right, so this is gonna be my furnace. So when I turn on the furnace, I have no return after I plug it up. Okay, our furnace is powered. We got 43 inches of water column. Now we have five. 0 0.8, 0 0.3. So as we add more return in, we lower the static pressure. 0.16, all right, we're gonna leave it there. So if they have a dirty filter, that would be right on par with what we would see in the real world application. So this is our furnace. So let me see if I can not cut my fingers off here. I gotta find those snips. That plastic was thicker than I gave it credit for. Beautiful. Seal this a little bit. Art and craft day here in HVAC world. So I put that at the high of this board so I have some support. I want to put this lid on there. I don't want to mark where the upper half of this lid is. This is a piece of condensate hose. I want to feed this down in there and right there should be good. This is just more to keep it from moving. If you're in HVAC, you're familiar with this adapter. This would thread into your drain pan. This is a three quarter electrical lock nut. Hopefully that will help hold it in place right there. But then too, you guessed it. We're gonna seal this some more. All right, so let's put our lid back on inside. Coming straight off of our male adapter, we typically would just have a little piece of pipe. We're gonna seal this in there too. Where are we gonna find some water? As the air conditioner is running, it is making water at a pretty steady pace. Oops. All right, you can see the water is going in our drain. Once the water gets up high enough, we'll see it starts to come out the end of the drain. So normal drainage out our drain. But when the blower is running, we're creating a negative pressure inside this cabinet. Plug it back in, John. Try again. Negative pressure. Or, oh, we need to move our boards over a little bit. Or point one. All right. We can move our boards in and out and reduce that a little bit. Let's say the filter is really dirty. Probably going to see a point two. There. Perfect. So as this is under a negative pressure, this is going to have air rushing in this way. So when we don't have a trap here, we have air coming in. So as I add more water, this simulates the air conditioner running and making more water. That's what's happening. And it's going to run some more and it's going to make some more water. And some of it may start to come out. But as you can see, that water level is well above where it would normally run out on its own. And in a drain pan, typically you've only got about this much space, so that water's coming back and it starts to splash and then it'll splash over the drain pan and start to get everywhere. So when the furnace shuts off and that negative pressure stops, then it's able to start draining. And the dirtier that filter gets, the more negative pressure you're gonna have. So we got a 0.9, let's see if we can... Yeah, let's make it a 0.39. We've seen some really bad filters. Air conditioner's running, making water. So the water's trying to go out through gravity, but the flow of air coming in is great enough to pull that water back. And that starts to get more and more violent. And as we look inside there, we can see the water is high enough to want to come out. And when our furnace shuts off, it will all come out. All right, so we're about done. We're just dripping. All right, we're done. So now let's take a closer look at this. Let's mark where that water line is. That water line is right across there. Make it all the way across here. The top of that line is where the water wants to drain out naturally through gravity. Let's kick her back on. This air conditioner is going to run all night long this time. Keep adding until we see a little bit come out. So now we got some drops. But look, look how high above that line the water level is because of that negative pressure in here. And again, if your coil just had the little pan, 
this water would be splashing like crazy going over the edge down into the return. You can see how violent it is. You see the water level line right there? And there's the opening of the pipe. So how do we fix that? That's why we put a trap in the system. Now, if we've already created this situation, if we just simply add a trap on there, we're not really doing anything because the air is now just going through the trap. But if we block the trap off with our thumb, we can notice it starts to fill up. I don't have this sealed real good, obviously. And I'm out of water. We can see we're pulling air through our trap right now. So let's run some more water here. I'm gonna have to seal that up. So now our trap is solid water. So now, as we pour more water in, the water is able to come out the drain. So now if we create a situation where we put a T, even though this trap is full of water, now our air is coming down the T. But if we were to take a cap and put a cap on it, now, which our trap's not completely full and we're not sealed. Hopefully you guys get the picture of when we're not trapped and then when we add the trap, we get this. So shut it off, it starts draining on its own. Now one more scenario. Don't worry, this is plugged into a GFI. The air conditioner is running, but our trap is dry. So we still don't have any water coming down into the trap. We're still pulling in fast enough that we're keeping all this water in the drain. There's our normal drain line. Way down here, there's our normal drain line. Now without a float switch, that air conditioner is just going to continue running. And now we got a little bit sloshed in here and we filled up our trap. So now you can see all that water running. I got a little bit of a leak right there. Let's see if I can seal that leak. That looks better than some of the copper welds I've seen lately. Okay, so now that we're properly trapped, we didn't fill our leak up over there very good, but we can see we have water coming all the way out our drain. Now, one thing we do have to be cautious of is when we create a second trap and we keep adding water. All right, so now we have a second trap. See the water. It's all the way over to here. We have got a second trap in here. So the pressure inside of here between this water and that water is actually higher now than atmospheric pressure. So it's actually pushing back on the water this way. So we're back up above the line again. So as your run is running across the attic and it makes some unintentional sags, you gotta be careful about that. Now, if we open this vent up, which I've glued it, if we open this vent up, then there would be no pressure here. It would vent out and that would continue to drain as normal. Or we can lower this back down and we'll see as it's coming out here, our line is getting back closer to normal. Hopefully that was a good visual for you guys to understand why traps are so important, how they work, why they're there. Careful of your placement on your vent. On gas furnaces, your drain and your coil are gonna be on the positive pressure side, so that air is actually helping push it out. So you don't have to trap those. You can still trap those. If nothing else, when the furnace ends it running, it'll stop any outside bugs or anything from climbing in the drain and getting inside. Always a possibility. I guess I could have mentioned for those who do not know, this is a manometer, a manometer. Manometer. This is how we measure pressures in inches of water column. And by inches of water column, if you look at this tube, you'll see a water line right there. If we were to put vacuum on one side or the other, it's gonna make that water lift up. And the more vacuum, the more to lift up on one side. So that's how they measure inches of water column, how many inches it would lift that water up. All right guys, it's hot, I'm going inside. We'll see you on the next one.